that's where it gets very interesting when we try to look at life from scientific point of view. Now the challenge here is that our approach to science, as I mentioned, has been very um, materialistic. Means uh, we need uh, uh, we need an external cause to have an effect. Mm -hmm. You know, like Newtonian laws. If you don't have a force, you can't move the thing. It won't start the motion. And if you look at uh, uh, physics, uh, quantum mechanics, every most of the physics is about motion. That's correct. Yeah. You know, it's everything. Newtonian laws, relativity, mm -hmm. quantum mechanics, it's all mechanics. But there is no theory with regard to how does the motion start. There is no physical phenomena or a governing uh, uh, law which will start a motion from scratch. Even the Big Bang mm -hmm. is a singularity. Whether the universe started its first motion, nobody knows what caused the motion. It only happened once. It happened once, and they can't see through it. They can't. Uh, uh, it's a, since it's a singularity in, in our theories of physics, it's it's uh, a mystery as to how did it start. Now, talking about even normal things in our normal things, we see people move. We are talking. We are there is a free will in us with which we are talking and speaking and thinking. What causes the motion of neurons in the brain in the way we want them to move in order for a thought to occur? Mm -hmm. Let's say we, we want to think about something, it has to have a, a motivation. Are you saying then that the biological mind is different from consciousness? Uh, that's the way it, if you start to look into logically and rationally, uh, you will find that there is something beyond the biological uh, cells, uh, neurons, uh, or brain, uh, because all these things are inanimate things. They cannot initiate a motion or change at their own. Mm -hmm. So the question comes, how does a change start? How do we start thinking, for example? What causes that phenomena called thinking, which involves the physical process? The neurons f start firing in the brain. But what causes it to, to, to begin? Mm -hmm. And that has been a major, I would say, in my mind, when I started working on this field, uh, I saw that as a major uh, shortcoming or shortfall in any of the theories of science. Yeah. It's like a TV set, who turns this on? Yeah, I mean, you can turn TV set on, but who decides to go and turn it on? Where does it start? So when I start looking into this, uh, uh, look into cosmology, starting from universe. Mm -hmm. How did it start? And why is it expanding? It continues to expand. Now, unless it's accelerating too, it's accelerating too. So why is it causing that? What is causing mm -hmm. it? And unless we want to go into now beliefs or myths or an external agency causing this, if you want to stay away from those metaphysical uh, reasons or causes, and look at purely scientifically, what causes change to occur? And if we realize, if we give recognition to that phenomena that causes a change, a, a physical definition, that what I call consciousness. Mm -hmm. It is that physical phenomena that induces a change at its own. And I recognize that as a physical phenomena and not as an epiphenomena. For example, if you look into the um, biological theories, mm -hmm. they would say the life was like a quantum soup. And somehow the chemicals got mixed together and somehow somebody stirred them and the life appeared. Right, yeah. Either through freezing and thawing and concentration over millions of years. That's, yeah. that's right. the theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's the theory. 
but or electrical storms and an ammonia soup, whatever. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. They say mix a uh, uh, make a mix of chemical soup and throw in some electricity, and, uh, and the life appears. You know, kind of theories. You now these are uh, they try to give a scientific, uh, let's say, a, a, a cr chronology mm -hmm. of events how the life could have appeared, but nobody has been able to produce that. Yeah, and with the.